There are over 100 craftable weapons in Destiny 2 right now. With that, I wanted to rank all of them so you know which ones to craft and which ones you should skip out on for PvE. I figured a fun way to do this would be in a tier list so I can give each weapon a definitive ranking and explain why I put them there. This one will be all about heavies, but I will make future videos about specials and primaries, so be on the lookout for those. Timestamps will be in the description if you want to skip to a certain weapon, and I have the tier list link below if you want to put one together for yourself as well. But with all that out the way, I hope you enjoy and let's get right into it. All right, so starting off, I'm going to have this tier list label S through F, and S is going to be a must craft where A and B are good, A being very good, and C, the weapons are okay, but you probably are never going to use them, while D, they're just not good, and F, I would literally never recommend you craft them unless you're just a collector and want to craft everything. So starting off with the first one, we have Apex Predator. I think we all already know where this is going to go. It is one of the best rocket launchers in the entire game. It can roll with things like reconstruction and bait and switch, and if that's not your thing, it even has things like demo and slot ways, but for the most part, reconstruction bait switch is going to be a way to go. You're going to get that two in the magazine alongside that 30% damage boost, and it auto loads as well in the background. So with all that it being the best rocket in the game, it has to go in S. It is a must craft. It is by far the best option you can even choose from. And with rockets still being really good right now, I would definitely get this one before final shape. Now, next up is going to be Bequest. Now, Bequest is an interesting sword. Now, some people know it's very strong and some people just kind of look over it a little bit. But a thing to note about Bequest is that it actually has a higher impact base. As you see, this has 70 impact and it can come with some very, very strong damage perks. With things like Surrounded, and if you do have it enhanced, that is going to be a 41 1.75% damage increase for this sword and since it's a sword you're pretty much always around the enemies and then you compare that with things like relentless strikes and you have one of the highest damage swords in the entire game now you do have to have a more understanding of the game so you can play around surrounded whereas other swords will do less but you can kind of just use them but if you do get this correctly set up you will have the highest damage sword in the entire game and for that i think it definitely deserves the s tier spot but moving on we have briar's content now this is another really interesting one because it is a very solid linear fusion rifle it has things like envious on here it even has things like frenzy for a damage perk surrounded for a damage perk even focus fury which can do very very well however the main role for this weapon is going to be envious and surrounded with enhanced surrounded this will be a 47 percent damage increase and the unique interaction with this linear specifically is the fact its origin trait can actually grant damage if you are running other root of nightmare weapons now this damage only is for tormentors and lucent hive but if you're soloing something like ghost of the deep or just somewhere with tormentors this thing can actually put in a ton of work you get a ton of damage increases and you never have to reload it outside of that though there are linear fusion rifles that are just going to be better than this and that's why i think it deserves an a tier spot if you do set it up in that right circumstance it's very very strong kind of like how we mentioned with bequest where it's really good in that specific circumstance the thing is with bequest though it's a very good legendary sword on its own even if you don't use in that whereas with briars other linears will be better if you are just using a linear and not really focusing on its specific setup but moving on we're going to have bump of the night now bump of the night was very good at one point because it could have chill clip on it and that could have some crazy interactions with wolfpack rounds but that's not really a thing anymore but it does have things like frenzy and i guess even vorpal if you want to count that it also has auto loading and fill prep so it has some pretty solid perks on here but if you are comparing it to other rocks of the game especially something like apex predator you're almost never going to use this thing you can set it up with like a auto loading frenzy setup so you can swap fast it auto loads and you can have some sort of a dps swap build going on but even then you might as well just run apex predator with reconstruction and bait and switch because it will still outperform this thing you're essentially trying to compete with a rocket that has two rockets in it can auto load and a higher damage increase whereas this one only has one it can auto load and it has a lower damage increase so for that reason i think it definitely deserves to go in the c spot if it's the only rocket you have it's definitely not a bad rocket but i would almost never use this over any other rocket something like hothead or even the break tech osprey from nightfalls and next up we have caretaker now a lot of people don't really talk about this sword at all but it is honestly not that bad because it does roll things like surrounded and again you also have the classic sword perks like relentless strikes or even duelist trance to get even more charge rate which could be pretty nice but surrounded on this if you don't have a bequest is very nice you don't have that increased impact like bequest does have but it can get the job done and even its origin trait can provide an increase to charge rate which is very very nice so for that reason i definitely think it deserves to go into the b spot it is a good sword i wouldn't label it as very good because i think things like lament will still outperform this but if you want a legendary sword and have an exotic slot open for something else this is a very solid sword to craft if you don't have the quest and next up is the good old cataclysmic this thing has been one of the best linears in the entire game for a very long time 
and it's going to stay that way. It still is going to go on the S tier, in my opinion. It has four times the charm to grant you more ammo, and you also never have to reload this perk. And it has bait and switch, one of the best damage perks in the game. 30% more damage and just being able to spray away with this thing. It is the best precision frame linear fuse rifle in the entire game right now. I honestly don't know if anything else really needs to be said about this weapon. Even its origin trait is not the worst. If you do have to reload, you do get health back during a boss phase. Even that is super nice to have. And next up, we have commemoration. This is going to be our first machine gun, and machine guns are typically use for doing ad clear and this thing has a ton of great ad clear perks for magazine perks we have reconstruction we have feed and frenzy for reload speed i guess you can kind of make four times of charm work but you also have subsistence for damage you have rampage you have kill and tally and you even have repulse race if you want to play into void builds this thing is very very solid the main go-to role that i personally have that i've been using for the longest time is reconstruction and kill and tally with this your magazine just goes up to an absurd amount you can plop on an extended mag you have 144 rounds in the magazine with a permanent 15 percent damage decrease because if you never swap off the weapon or never reload, and obviously reconstruction can help out with that because it just reloads on its own, you can just have a permanent damage decrease all the time. On top of that, the orange trait also grants you ability energy when you deal damage with the weapon. So overall, this thing just absolutely is disgusting for ad clear and it even helps into your builds by giving your abilities back so for that reason i think this is a must craft if you want a very solid ad clear weapon and that's why i'm putting it in the s tier now next up we have death's razor this is going to be a warlock exclusive sword it does have things like vorpal on it and even surrounded we've been talking about surrounded on swords quite a lot and pretty much all its normal sword perks so you can swap them out on its own this thing isn't the greatest but again you do have that surrounded and you know relentless strikes roll if you want to use it for damage this is going to be a vortex frame whereas the other ones are just adaptive frames so for those reasons it's not bad but i do want to reiterate that this is going to be a warlock exclusive sword so no other class can get it and i think we should take that into consideration when we're talking about its rank and that's why i'm just going to say c tier it's really you know it's okay but i'm never really going to use it over any other sword something like a quest if i have that or even caretaker if i'm on any class because any class could use this Death's Razor, you can only use it on the Warlock, and it's really just okay at best. It definitely doesn't deserve the not good category, because it is a decent sword, if that's the only thing you have. But being that only Warlocks can use it, and other swords are just better, that other classes can use, I think it deserves the C-tier spot. Now, next up, we're going to have the Dimensional Hypotrochoid, I think is how you pronounce it. But this is going to be a Wayframe Heavy Grenade Launcher, and these are meant to be actor weapons. These aren't super specific for DPS. I think Bungie has tried to reiterate the fact that these are just supposed to be for ad clear now on its own this thing isn't the craziest it does have things like fork bull if you are trying to go damage perk route with field prep but for the most part for envious assassin and chain reaction if you are built into what this thing is supposed to be it does have very solid perks for that having that increased magazine size alongside being able to blow everything up and i'm pretty sure chain reaction is even getting a buff in the final shape for heavy weapons so it could be even better but the problem is is that if you are running a heavy for ad clear in my personal opinion i don't know why you would ever run this over just a machine gun you have way more ammo it can arguably even do more damage for bosses because it's harder to just hit the wave frame grenade launcher if there's like a you know a boss flying in the air and for all of those reasons i think it definitely deserves the d tier spot it is definitely Definitely not good but i wouldn't say to never use it because it does have a decent role and if bungie does end up buffing these things they become very good you know this could definitely be moved up some so it does have potential it's just not good kind of where the game currently is if you compare it to other things and again you have forbearance a special weapon that can pretty much do what this thing does but it uses special ammo and it can arguably do it better the next up we have doomed petitioner now this one might come to a surprise for some of you but this thing is cracked out with a bunch of solid perks you have envious assassin and even reconstruction Construction for a magazine decrease most of the time you're going to be going with envious assassin but you also have things like surround it so if you remember surround it we've been mentioning quite a lot on brass content that is what makes this weapon very good well this you know normal legendary fusion you can just get for doing seasonal content also has surround it you can enhance that for that 47 percent damage decrease and if you don't want surround it, it even has precision instrument that is where this thing comes into play with enhanced precision instrument at max stacks it actually goes to 30 percent increased damage and since this is an aggressive frame it will fire three rounds that means on only two shots of this linear fusion rifle you have max stacks of precision instrument with that increase in magazine size so you never have to reload you're going to be able to pump out a lot of damage with this thing 
game. Now, if linears are ever the play again, this is going to be the best linear fusion rifle in the game, in my opinion. Something like Cataclysmic definitely could compete with it. And I think since you are competing with an S tier weapon, and it is by far the best aggressive linear fusion rifle in the game, and it even has potential to become a play and maybe something like the final shape, I think it deserves the S tier. You can also note that this does do void damage, so you can also play into volatile and something like a group falcons hunter and you can do some absolutely disgusting things with this and if that wasn't enough its origin trait is also nice so if you get critically wounded or if a teammate dies you will refill the magazine and most of the time you're going to be using this during a boss fight so if you do get critically wounded you can refill this thing and shoot it even more with things like envy assassin and that pair together it is going to be ridiculously strong now we can't have too much fun with our seasonal weapons let's move on to the elastic principle this thing is really not that good at all if we take a look at its perks it has pretty much nothing with the sombable being its best reload speed perk in this first column its origin trade is also pretty much pointless in pve and for damage perks you only have things like adrenaline junkie and golden tricorn which i guess is okay if you are running a arc based build since this is an arc weapon it could put in some pretty solid work but with no solid magazine increase perk or reload speed perk this thing is pretty much just dead on arrival pretty much every other machine gun in this game even the crafted ones are going to be better for ad clear and even if you're using it for dps there's even another better option for a 900 rpm once we get later down this line so there is almost no reason you should use this thing at all and that's why i think this is going to go into the f tier its perk pool is just absolutely trash it has one of the worst origin trades in the game for pve and almost every other machine gun in this game will perform better than this thing if you're not a collector save your materials you never want to craft this thing and if there is a hidden rule that i don't know about definitely be sure to let me know because i will happily eat my own words but this thing on its own is just not good whatsoever and i wouldn't even recommend it taking a space in your vault the next up is the fire and forget this is going to be a stasis aggressive frame linear fusion rifle it does have the origin trait vice stinger so while you're doing damage it can refill the magazine which is actually pretty solid if you just want to shoot out a lot of shots you can even play into that by having more ammo with things like fill prep and for a damage increase you do have things like vorpal and frenzy and even focus fury so it's not a bad linear fusion rifle so to speak you have a bunch of ammo it can reload itself and you can do some more damage Damage. obviously all that stacked together will be a very nice combination the problem is again with its perks pretty much any other linear fusion rifle can do what this does better if you look something like doom petitioner it has the better mag perk it has the better damage perks with surrounded and precision instrument so this one is just kind of left in the dust now this is the only linear fusion rifle that you do have it is a pretty solid option again with this perks combination here it can do some pretty nasty things and that's why i think it deserves the b tier spot it is good it's sort of like the caretaker in a way where other stuff is just going to be better be it because it has higher impact or the perks are just more solid than what this has but on its own it is still pretty good if it's the only thing you do have and i could potentially see myself using this if there ever is a stasis damage increase and i need to use the linear fusion rifle so that's why i think it deserves the b tier spot whereas something like bump of the night and death razor i don't really ever see myself using it i mean i'm a warlock main and i honestly don't know if i've ever even used this crafted version of death's razor the next up we're going to have fixed odds now if we take a look at x perks this thing has some pretty solid perks obviously we're using machine guns for ad clear you have things like fill prep for even more ammo and faster reload speeds if you crouch feed and frenzy on its own just for fast reload speed on kills incandescence very solid alongside that you have rampage and kill and tally kill and tally maybe not being as good on this because you don't have a magazine size increase for your perks but for reload speed based perks you have rampage which is solid and what most people will do with this is pair with incandescent because feed and frenzy incandescent again or even fill prep incandescent this thing is very very solid for solar builds it is one of the best machine guns in the game if you are pairing it with a solar 3.0 base build because it can ignite and just add clear it like crazy i have used this machine gun a lot and i would highly recommend using it i don't think it is a must craft because other machine guns again kind of just can overall do better than this but if you are playing into solar it is one of the best machine guns you can use it is disgustingly good it has a ton of ammo and you can just ignite everything and for all those reasons as you just saw me put it there i think it definitely deserves the eighth tier spot it is a very very good machine gun just definitely doesn't deserve to be in that must craft territory now next up is gold tusk now this is kind of like death's razor in a way but this is only unique to the hunters it doesn't have surrounded but it does have things like whirlwind blade alongside all its other normal sword perks so again it's really just an okay sword you do look really cool when you're holding this and for that reason 
again, I'm just going to put in C tier. It's okay. I probably would never use this. If you're using this for DPS, there are just better options. But if it's the only sword you have and you're really trying to live that hunter fantasy, it is okay. You can get by with it. But I would almost recommend pretty much any other sword if you do have them. Now, next up, we have half truce. Now, I'm going to pair this one with the other half just because they kind of are the same thing. You're really just using these for eager edge. Just note, both of these have eager edge. The only difference is the other half has eager edge and a damage perk, whereas half truce has eager edge and no damage perks that's why i think you know half truce deserves going the a spot whereas the other half deserves going the s tier spot because you can't pair this with the damage perk if you're just speed running strikes or something uh, you know you have extra damage for the sword which is nice whereas this one you really only can take advantage of eager edge now next up is Carax's distress i actually use this grenade launcher to solo flawless my warlord's ruin run and this thing does have some very solid perks your obviously grenade launchers like cataphract are very very strong right now and if you don't have a good cataphract this is a pretty solid alternative this is going to be strand it has things like surround it which is its go-to thing but it also has frenzy i guess you can also count full court as well but on top of that it does have reconstruction and envious assassin two of the best perks in the game right now for pve you get that increased magazine size you don't really have to worry about reloading the gun whatsoever but since this is a root of nightmares weapon it also has the origin trait to do more damage to the tormentors and loosen hives so pairing that with surround it in the certain circumstances this thing can absolutely destroy and again if you enhance your traits your surround is going to be doing even more damage so kind of you have another certain circumstance type weapon it is very good if you are in that specific circumstance and i think that's why it serves going to a tier spot now even if you aren't taking advantage of the origin trait and you don't have something like cataphract again this is a very solid alternative and i think that's why serves an A because it is a very good weapon but again cataphract if it was a crafted weapon would be in the S tier spot and this would just be right under it. Now next up we have Palmyra B. What used to be one of the best rocket launchers of the game is now just kind of okay in my opinion. A cool thing to note is that this does have built-in tracking which can be pretty useful and it even has things like explosive light and lasting impression which aren't the best damage perks in the game by any means but they are solid for just giving you that extra little bump in damage. It even has frenzy as well if you want to take that. You can pair that with things like auto loading so you never have to reload the gun that's pretty much the best perk in this first column and you can have a pretty solid DPS swap rocket launcher it auto loads it tracks for you and you know you even have frenzy to increase that swap speed or lasting impression and explosive light if you want that little extra damage now for all those reasons i think that's why it serves to go into the c tier spot pretty much again every other rocket is going to be better than this i would almost never recommend using this it kind of falls into just like bump the knife it is pretty solid if you are playing into like a dps swap build but apex better can just do that already better it has two shots it auto loads itself higher damage boost than any of these perks that it does have the only benefit that this does have over the other ones is that it can auto track which maybe you could recommend moving it into b for that specific situation but even then i still think c tier is for sure the way to go with this thing but now we have plink stride this is going to be another 900 round per minute arc machine gun again on its own right here the perks are not really that good at all it reminds me a lot of another certain machine gun we were talking about but it does have a pretty interesting origin trade alongside some combinations that can play into that origin trade and that is going to be right hook so this just makes it when you're doing melee damage you will actually get some extra range target acquisition which obviously isn't the greatest thing in pve but it can play into some other perks like grave robber which i know sounds kind of troll but on a machine gun if you do have you know one shot left in this thing it can take quite a while to reload but this you could just get a melee kill and it reloads the whole magazine and your pockets origin trait with that you can pair it with something like swashbuckler so when you get that melee kill you get max damage a fully reloaded gun some extra range and you can add clear with it again this thing is definitely not the greatest at all but for this specific interaction just some really cool ways you can build into it since it's craftable you can obviously just select these i think it definitely deserves the deep tier spot is not good it's definitely not going to even compete with any other machine gun in the game but it is a very very fun setup if you want to take advantage of it but i would almost highly recommend every single other machine gun in this entire game and honestly if it didn't have this exact setup i probably would put it in the f tier spot but with that i think it deserves the d tier spot and the next up is quilliam's terminus we're in a little machine gun streak here apparently but again we're using these for act clear it does have things like stats for all and even unrelenting for just some better act clear alongside that you have headstone if you're playing the stasis builds kill and tally as well and even firefly now i want to note that its origin trade is pretty nice if you reload 
while near teammates, it will overflow the magazine. So already, if you have a higher magazine, you can pair this with kill and tally to take more advantage of it. But for the most part, if you are using a kill and tally weapon, you're probably just going to run commemoration. Now for other things, again, with headstone, you can play into stasis builds, which is very, very nice. But I think what's really cool is that you can play into firefly. And if you get a precision kill, the explode, obviously, and you get some reload speed. On top of that, you can also you know, do stats for all. It's easy to proc with things like firefly. You get a bunch of reload speed, which can play into its origin trait. And even if you want unrelenting as well, you can also get some health back on those multi kills. But I think stats for all firefly is probably the best combination for this thing. Now on paper, that obviously sounds pretty good. But again, if we are comparing this to other machine guns in the game, commemoration is just leagues beyond this. Again, that huge magazine, you have that permanent damage decrease. Fixed odds also, in my opinion, links beyond this. It, if you play into solar, it is just very, very strong. Even if you play into stasis with this, it is really not that good in pretty much any other just headstone weapon that's a primary weapon that can do what this does. So I re really couldn't recommend it for that. And that's why I'm just gonna put it in the C tier spot. It's okay. I would probably never use this over any other machine gun in the entire game, but with the per combination of Firefly stats for all, if this is the only thing you have, this can definitely get the job done for ad clear. And maybe even if there's like a stasis surge on or something you could potentially run this over some of the other ones but again like i said it's just okay and other stuff is pretty much always going to be better the next up we have the recurring impact which might shock some of you but this thing is very very solid as you see this is going to be a stasis rapid fire machine gun and that pretty much eliminates the need of ever having to run pulliam's terminus if there is a stasis surge because you can just run this thing if we take a look at its perks here you have things like stats for all and even fill prep both pretty solid you get more ammo you get more reload speed even with stats for all you get a bunch of stats subsistence probably going to be the go-to perk you just get a bunch of kills it's gonna reload the magazine and you can pair that with things like frenzy to get that damage decrease and even one for all to get the highest damage increase in the entire game you shoot three targets with this thing you get 35 percent increased damage you never have to reload it and even if you want to pair that with stats for all you can even have the combination of getting a ton of stats alongside that damage decrease but i think subsistence again is going to probably be the way to go now what makes this very very strong is the fact that its origin trait is very very strong you get a kill with this you're going to get five percent damage reduction that does stack and even 10 resilience as well and it can stack up to three times so you're just slaying out you never have to reload you have one of the highest damage perks in the entire game and you're getting damage reduction on top of all that there really is nothing that can go wrong with this weapon it is a ad clear machine and it even keeps you alive for a lot longer and to be honest the only downside to this is that it doesn't have some like reconstruction or envious but subsistence can make up for that it's just not going to be as good and the fact that it's a non hunter rpm you could argue that 450s and maybe even 360s are a little bit better because they're a lot easier to use but if you can get the hang of it with this perk combinations i definitely think this weapon deserves an a tier spot comparing this with something like fixed odds i definitely think they deserve to go in the same category i don't think either of them are going to outperform commemoration or even some other machine guns we're about to get into but on its own if this is all you have this is very solid and again you do get damage reduction with this weapon and i think we all know how strong damage reduction can be in this game now moving on we have the red herring this is going to be another rocket launcher so you can kind of probably already guess where this is going to go but it does have things like fill prep which is probably its best part in this first column and things like frenzy and last impression if you want to take that frenzy probably being its best perk more ammo more reload speed more damage this thing could be pretty nice. I guess if you want to throw in a cycle hack thing, you can make enemies do reduce damage. But with Sever in the game, Sever is just way better in, in pretty much every single way. It's an okay rocket launcher. You're never going to use it over any of the other rockets in the game. So again, we're kind of going to the C tier. It just kind of fits in with Palmyra, Bump of the Night. Like rockets, the fact that rockets are good, this is an okay weapon. But again, just never going to compete with anything else that we already have. I guess we can't mention that it is Void complaining to Volatile. So if you want to move it up to B, I guess you could. But again, it has the lesser damage perk and the lesser magazine or reload speed based perk. So you never are really going to use this over something like Apex. The next up is the Regnet. This is going to be an adaptive frame grenade launcher. So we're already starting off pretty solid on top of that again you know like we mentioned with red herring it is void so it can play into volatile rounds but it can roll with things like cascade point if you want to just dump the mag out and you can even pair that with something like auto loading so you can reload and you have a very very solid dps swap build going on here now you can also pair this with things like envious as well just to have that increased magazine if you would like that but i think if you're building into what this weapon's supposed to be with auto loading holster cascade you can you know just constantly swap over and over again unload your whole magazine and it's very very solid even even if you want to run something like explosive light and envious this can even be a pretty solid pairing here this is not going to outperform something like cataphract or even the edge transit that is coming but for a crafted grenade 
main launcher to have this pretty solid perks and the fact that it's an adaptive frame i think this deserves going to a tier spot you can do some pretty cool combinations with this and if this is the only grenade launcher you do have this is probably the one you want to craft again it's not gonna be better than cataphract or the edge transit that is coming but if this is your only option it is a very very good one now next up is retrofit escapade now when it comes to doing dps with a machine gun if you, I guess if you're not used to Thunderlord, memes aside, this is probably going to be your best option. Now, you should never use a machine gun for DPS. I guess it can be kind of a super safe option, but other stuff is always going to be better. Again, most of the time, these are going to be for ad clear. Now, Retrofit is a very fun one because it can roll with things like fourth times of charm and target lock. So you have a ton of ammo you never have to reload you're just granting ammo from thin air and target lock is going to just do a massive amount of damage increase if you are shooting the same target so this is probably the best legendary dps machine gun the game is extremely easy to use but even if you aren't using it for that it even has things like feed and frenzy for reload speed fill prep for more ammo more reload speed and stats for all again for just a bunch of stats you can pair that with things like one for all for a very solid act clear roll it even has things like rampage and frenzy so again all those are very very solid it's really good for act clear too and you can kind of build this in either way if you want to go an easy dps route you know you have that or if you want to build into an act clear weapon you also have the perks that we just talked about i pretty much would always craft other act clear machine guns with things like commemoration and even recurring impact but if this is all you have it is very solid for act clear and the fact that it can also roll with a very solid dps weapon and the fact that this origin trait can also provide extra damage that's pretty rare that is a very very solid weapon in my opinion and for that i think i'm going to put this in the a tier slot because even if you don't use it for dps with this role it is still very solid for just taking out majors even things like champions don't really have to think about it whatsoever you just unload the magazine and again i know we mentioned this a million times but it is void so it can play into volatile rounds for even extra damage and i think it is a very very fun weapon and next up we have the cell spy pitch class now this is going to be a precision frame so i think we all already know that this isn't even going to come close to cataclysmic but if we take a look at its perks it does have things like clown cartridge and even things like vorpal frenzy and focus fury if you're trying to go for a damage route this thing if you don't have a cataclysmic is pretty good in all honesty because it does have some very very solid perks but if you do have a cataclysmic you're almost never going to use this thing now obviously not everyone's going to have cataclysmic and i think for its perks i think it definitely deserves a decent b tier spot you have a very solid magazine increase a very solid damage increase and if this is your only linear it can do some decent work now next up we have the semiotician this is going to be a strand rocket launcher this thing is honestly not too bad. It does have some decent perks with things like fill prep. On top of that for damage perk, it even has things like frenzy and explosive light. But I think the most interesting role for this is the fact that it can have bipod. Bipod and fill prep paired together. Both of these are actually going to increase your reserve. So you get a ton of ammo and fill prep. You get that fast reload speed as well while you're crouched. So if there is ever a rocket that is just meant to be crouched and just constantly shoot over and over again, this is the rocket for you and it can do some pretty decent damage and it's also just nice to have for things like champions because you just have so much ammo you don't really have to worry about it whatsoever its origin trait is kind of pointless but if you are pairing it with fill prep i guess it kind of does do something but overall i definitely think this is a pretty solid rocket launcher and i think that's why it deserves going to beat your spot i pretty much would always use this over something like bump of the night red herring or even Palmyra because it does have some of the newer rocket based perks and even has things like explosive light as well so you have a pretty solid rocket launcher right here again not going to be as good as some other rockets that we do have but if this is your only option or if you just want to have that play style of just shooting a rocket over and over again you know shoot two rockets reload shoot two rockets reload not really think whatsoever this is going to be your best go-to option i think it's pretty good for that and next up we have the song of area this is basically just the arc commemoration it's 450 round per minute it has some very solid perks you know demo feed and frenzy unrelenting rewind rounds reconstruction on top of that you know you even have vault shot i guess if you want to play into it with you know, feed and frenzy but you also have things like cascade point sword logic even bait and switch is also very very good if you want to go a dps route you have things like a rewind rounds and target lock but again if you're going for a dps machine gun just use retrofit but overall this thing has some very very solid perks now what most people are going to take is reconstruction sword logic you just get kills again you, you have the huge magazine you never have to reload but you can even pair this with bait switch to even have a higher damage increase and it's not too difficult to proc but just not having to really think about it whatsoever sword logic is probably going to be your best good to perk you just have a permanent damage increase a very very large magazine size and on top of that it's origin trait if you get a melee kill you actually will cause explosions so it's origin trait kind of acts as firefly in a way 
which is also very, very strong for ad clear. You just have to get a melee kill, but that's really not too hard to do. And you basically just come up with the question, do you really want more ability energy with commemoration or do you want to cause explosions with Song of Iria? They're very, very similar. Again, one's Arc, one's Void, and I think it definitely deserves to go in the S tier spot. I don't think you need to craft both of these unless you just want to, but if you only want to craft one, again, just ask yourself, do you want a Void weapon that can play into Volatile and give you more ability energy, or do you want a Arc weapon that has the same perks as Commemoration, but can cause explosions and basically just have Firefly on it as well? Most of the time, I use Commemoration, but don't get me wrong, Song of Your Yud is very, very solid. The next up, we have the Taipan. This is a classic. Almost everyone has this thing in their inventory, and if, for good reason. It has some very solid perks. You know, I think we all know the triple tap fire line. We don't have to go super in depth with everything else because that's what literally everyone crafts. It's the best perk you can get. You get ammo out of thin air. You don't have to reload. It has Vice Stinger as well. On top of that fire line, you get that 20% increased damage. It is very, very solid. And if you're comparing this to our other precision frames that we have in this tier list, things like Cataclysmic, things like like Cell Spy. This is going to be better than Cell Spy, but obviously it's not going to be as good as Cataclysmic. So I think it still is in a very, very good spot. If this is the only linear you do have, it's still going to perform pretty well, but obviously other stuff is kind of just better than it at this point with things like Doom Petitioner and Cataclysmic kind of just always being the better option. And next up, we have the Tard Nation. I probably haven't used this thing at all since it came out. I do have to craft it, but this thing, it really has no good damage perks whatsoever. The only thing you can really build into is maybe at clear with things like chain reaction, fill prep, clown cartridge. Obviously, those are pretty decent perks for just, you know, increasing your magazine size or have more ammo. But you're never really going to use this thing for DPS. And if you are using a grenade launcher for at clear, specifically a heavy grenade launcher, you might as well just use this one right here because it's literally made for ad clear with the waveframes. So this one, I don't really foresee it ever being that good at all at anything because it doesn't have damage decrease there is literally just another weapon that's better and even the fact that this weapon is better for ad clear you still really shouldn't use these for ad clear if you have machine guns so for all that i think it deserves to go into f tier spot i pretty much would never use this over literally anything else in the game and special weapons and even primary weapons do better than what this thing can do now next up we have the thin precipice and we're closing out on a very low mark now honestly because this sword is also not that good it doesn't have really any crazy damage perks kind of just like the tarnation in a way it has its usual sword perks but it's origin trait is like literally doing nothing it is one of the worst origin traits in the game in my opinion it wants you to not have any of your abilities it's basically a reverse surplus so i i don't know why you would ever want this but it does have act clear perks with things like chain reaction which i guess could be pretty good if you run tyler's blade you, you know it's a vortex frame so you can get a bunch of ammo back alongside causing a bunch of explosions so it is pretty fun in that regard but you're not really using these for ad clear in my opinion most of the time you're going to be using machine guns or even primary weapons so for that I, I you know it does have a pretty fun combination with chain reaction and a vortex frame so i think it can go in the d tier spot by any means is this thing good it's definitely deserves to go in the not good territory but i don't think it's f tier if there is like a strain surge going on and potentially you know sword ad clear becomes the new meta I definitely see myself using that, but with right now in the game, it's really just not that good. And maybe if the origin trait was a little bit better, it's maybe if it has something like Vanguard's Vindication, so you could just, you know, add clear with it to get health back, maybe I could move it up to C, but as it stands right now, I definitely think it's just not good. And I think it sits well in the D spot. Now, the last weapon we have is the Throne Cleaver. This is a Titan specific sword, but unlike the other swords, this thing actually is pretty solid. Now, I do want to take into consideration that this is a Titan specific sword. You can play into Stronghold and do some pretty crazy things with this, but it has things like Surround It, one of the best sword perks in the game. It even has Vorpal if you don't like Surround It, but it also has things like Duelist Trance to get that increased charge rate so you can slam with this thing a lot more. This thing can put out a ton of damage and I think it deserves to go into the A tier spot. If you're built into it correctly and you have that crazy damage with Surround It, you can absolutely obliterate it enemies with this thing and it even has some pretty solid dps as well if you do have surrounded proc i don't think it's going to be as good as bequest but overall it is a ton of fun if you build into it correctly and that's why i put it in the a spot but that is my ranking on all of the crafted heavy weapons in destiny 2 right now let me know if you think i put something in the wrong place or where you would put it if you swap things around but overall out of all the crafted heavy weapons there honestly are a good amount of s tier picks and i would recommend crafting almost every single one of them before the final shape comes out Anyways, though, that's going to do it all for me. I wish you all the best of luck if you are going to craft any of these after watching this. But thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Peace.